Remember this man, he was one of a kind. Abdul Qadir Khan is a Pakistani nuclear scientist who ran a black market in the 1990s when nuclear weapons technology, materials and components were traded among a rogues gallery of nations, Iran, Pakistan and North Korea. The black market was wound up in 2003 in the wake of investigations by Western governments, but did it continue in some form? North Korea's advances in military technologies and missile technologies in the span of 20 years, despite sanctions of every kind, suggest a leak somewhere, possibly many leaks. Clearly nothing that Khan did was without the backing of the powerful army. In, the fact, in fact, he wrote, and I quote, they might try to get rid of the cover-up, all the dirty things they got done by me in connection with Iran, Libya and North Korea. Look at the missiles that armed a varied cast of characters in our region and beyond. The basic missile, common to all, is a Russian Scud or the Chinese variant called the Scud C. The result is a missile proliferating to countries that have few compunctions without using it to blackmail, intimidate or perhaps even use it if it comes to that. Joining me live on the program to discuss more on this is Sushant Sareen. He's an expert as well as Emma Shaheen. He's a senior Pakistani journalist. Coming to you first, Mr. Sareen, a special weapons facility. How credible is this? Well, it seems to be credible uh, since the reports are coming out. But uh, the question is, uh, you know, uh, what has happened to all the proliferation regimes uh, which we've been talking about uh, and, you know, this whole... Uh, See, clearly, uh, we know that the, the way the Pakistanis have been expanding their arsenal and the kind of support they've been getting uh, from the Chinese, for example, uh, and their links with other countries like North Korea and others, uh, I, I don't think that's, that's a secret anymore. So if some facility like that is now being uncovered, uh, I don't see how, uh, you know, it, 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 it's uh, something as a surprise. I think it's something which uh, should have been expected. Right. And Amr Shaheen, how much Pakistan could have helped North Korea in developing nukes with the help of A.Q. Khan, who's the man in question here? Uh, in order to answer that, you have to look at who A.Q. Khan is. Many people regard him as the father of Pakistan's nuclear program. But then there are other learned people who regard uh, other scientists like Dr. Abdul Salam as the main person behind Pakistan's nuclear program. Uh, re recently, in, in the few recent years, there was this guy who fictitiously claimed to have invented a machine that would allow cars to run on water. Dr. Abdul Qadir Khan said he had scientifically verified that it works. Obviously, it was a fraud. Dr. Abdul Qadir Khan is more, uh, I think he's better at probably stealing technology and um, helping others steal technology. That's his specialty. And it's not an alleged statement because he did come on national television in Pakistan and confessed to leaking or selling uh, Pakistan state's nuclear secrets to North Korea and Iran is on the record. Right, and uh, Sushant Sareen, how do you see the relationship between Pakistan and North Korea here? And considering the fact that uh, several sanctions have been imposed on them by the United Nations here? See, the sanctions have been there even in the past. Uh, and I agree with what Amit Shaheen is saying that uh, this guy was no scientist or anything. Uh, he was at best a technologist. Uh, and uh, he was uh, he was quite adept at stealing technology and passing it on. And, you know, the Libyan, the Iranian and many other nuclear programs are directly traced back to this. Uh, then we also uh, know it for a fact that there was a quid pro quo between the Pakistanis and the North Koreans, even when sanctions were there, not just on Pakistan, but also on North Korea uh, on, on weapons of mass destruction. The North Koreans gave them the missiles, the Pakistanis gave them uh, the designs and uh, there is there are reports that some centrifuges, etc. were also uh, transported uh, by military aircraft uh, to North Korea. Now, under the current circumstances, when uh, the Americans have been breathing very heavily uh, on North Korea and there are UN sanctions which have also been imposed, uh, I don't think that countries like the Russians, the Chinese and uh, 
I suspect the Pakistanis have completely broken off their links with the North Koreans, uh, and they're not uh, indulging in some kind of a quid pro quo uh, with the North Koreans. In, in the case of the Pakistanis, it is believed that a lot of cash also exchanged hands. Uh, that was in the past. Uh, recently, the Pakistanis have been, uh, you know, uh, have been leaning in favor of the sanctions on North Koreans. But then this kind of double speak often happens in this kind of a uh, game uh, that you say one thing for public consumption, but behind the scenes uh, there is surreptitious cooperation which continues. Uh, so if something like this is now coming out, uh, then uh, I, you know, I think uh, there is a lot of background to it. Uh, to uh, suspect that uh, some involvement might still be very much on. Absolutely. And the man in question here, A.Q. Khan, Emma Shain, do you think he's still involved? It is impossible to say whether or not A.Q. Khan or the military establishment that he alleged himself was behind the pro uh, proliferation and the leaking out of secrets are still involved. It's impossible to say. But uh, some indicators that you can look at in order to make up your own, decision, own, own uh, opinion on this is the fact that when A.Q. Khan was arrested and he confessed publicly uh, for stealing Pakistan's state secrets and leaking them out, he didn't even get a slap on the wrist. He was arrested, but uh, due to the military's pressure, he uh, first he accused the military establishment and then uh, General Pervez Musharraf. But later on, he's become he's also entered politics. Now he's become one of the main anti-democratic forces in Pakistan. He has blamed uh, former uh, assassinated Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto now for instructing him to do all of that. So he is, I mean, if you look at the fact that he got, he got out of jail free, there is every likelihood that, you know, people who were very powerful in Pakistan support get, uh, allowed him to get out of that situation. So it would be, it, it is a possibility that it could continue. Or, however, there's no evidence uh, to support that argument. All right, I believe Sushant Sareen wants to respond. Yes, yeah. Sushant, go ahead. I agree with what uh, uh, Mr. Shaheen is saying, that there was no evidence. But see, I think the circumstantial evidence suggests that, uh, you know, uh, the fact that he was not put in prison uh, or no other action was taken against him except a public confession uh, suggests that, uh, you know, there was something much more to it than meets the eye. Because you can't be going against an international consensus uh, and, and then just get out of jail free. Uh, and the reason was that there was no way that AQ Khan could have done what he was doing without the army and the intelligence agencies being very much a part of it. Uh, it is inconceivable that military planes with the you know top secret designs, maybe even equipment, <coughs> fly from one country to another, uh, and nobody in the entire Pakistani military hierarchy knows about what is happening. Uh, there are multiple layers which have to be crossed when you do these kind of things. And the fact that AQ Khan was, uh, you know, there were many military officers who were very much part of his entourage, uh, suggests that uh, the military was very much in the know. It was very much on, on, on this whole thing. Uh, there are also reports and very credible ones that people like Aslam Beg and others, uh, the former army chief, was very much part of this. And it was, in fact, it was Aslam Beg uh, who wanted to give the Iranians a nuclear weapon. Uh, and then, you know, with the Libyan connection, we also know the people who were involved. Uh, so to, so I, I think that what actually happened was that they took this easy way out, that this guy will make a public confessional. After that, no further action will be taken against him, nor will any access to him be right. given to the Western countries. So he will not tell anything more. And the uh, it's not only he who gets off scot-free, but also the Pakistani army uh, or the military establishment which gets off scot-free. Right, right. And interestingly, you brought that up. And Emmer, you know, a country where the army calls the shot, do you think ultimately it controls the nuclear? Who controls the nuclear button then? Uh, legally, the civilian government is supposed to, but the civilian government, I mean, when Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto was in power, she was deemed a threat to national security, basically meaning that she wasn't given access to any of the defense mechanisms of the country, including the nuclear defense. So it is really the military establishment that controls uh, decisions pertaining to uh, nuclear uh, capability of Pakistan and for the protection of it. Uh, legally, it's a different scenario. Practically, it's something that even the civilian government does not contest. Uh, the military is in control of the nuclear facilities and nuclear defense.
Right, and uh, Sushant Sareen, uh, what the question here is, is this nuclear black market that we're talking about, would you think it will still be in operation in some form or perhaps that's far-fetched? Well, I suppose that there will be a nuclear black market. Uh, now, uh, how dangerous that nuclear black market will ultimately be is another matter. But I think uh, uh, to expect that given the kind of uh, knowledge which has increased, the number of people who've been involved in this industry from all over the world, including some countries, uh, you know, which have gone down under, uh, you know, you've had places like uh, uh, Belarusia, you've had places like Ukraine. Now, uh, suddenly we see a very close relationship developed between Pakistan and uh, Belarusia. Uh, uh, now, Belarus uh, really has really very little to offer Pakistan, except for maybe tractors, which can be bought from anywhere else. But over the last four or five years, uh, this remarkable closeness which we have seen between Belarus and, uh, and the Pakistanis. Now, uh, one <clears throat> interpretation of that could be then maybe the Russians are doing something through Belarus because it's virtually become a satellite state of the Russians. Or it, it, the other possibility is that the Pakistanis and the Belarus uh, people uh, are actually involved in some kind of surreptitious activity. So uh, it, it could take the form of a nuclear black market. But even otherwise, uh, the fact that there are a number of uh, you know scientists, technologists, uh, people who have some part companies as well, uh, which are manufacturing uh, some of the more sensitive equipment, and uh, some people in that uh, might uh, you know be willing to part with uh, some of that equipment uh, for a certain price, which is how actually the Pakistanis have built their entire nuclear program. Right. Uh, so to expect or to imagine that that kind of a thing does not exist anymore, uh, I think would be stretching the limits of uh, incredulity. Well, uh, thank you there, both of you, uh, Emma Shaheen and uh, Sushant Sareen, for joining us on the program and discussing this particular news at length. Now, remember this man, he is one of a kind, Abdul Qadir Khan, or AQ Khan. He is a Pakistani nuclear scientist who ran a black market in the 1990s, where nuclear weapons technologies, materials and components were traded among a rogues gallery of nations, namely Iran, Pakistan and North Korea. The black market was wound up in 2003 in the wake of investigations by Western governments. But did it continue in some form? North Korea's advances in missile technology in the span of 20 years, despite sanctions of every kind, suggest a leak somewhere. Possibly many leaks. And VK Singh, India's Defence uh, Minister, pardon me, India's Minister of State for External Affairs, noted, and I quote, a DP, DPRK's continued pursuit of nuclear and ballistic missile programs and its proliferation links, which directly impacts India's national security, he said there. Look at these facts. No less than Parvez Musharraf, Pakistan's president when AQ Khan was doing his export trade, said of the famed scientist, and quote AK Khan transferred nearly two dozen P1 and P2 centrifuges to North Korea. Along with a flow meter, some special oils for centrifuges and coaching on centrifuge technology, including visits to top secret centrifuge plants.